This is uh, Jack Ellis at Bar Mills. And this is Artie Fahey. And we're going to be talking about our weathering of our buildings, particularly about staining and ink and alcohol stain. We're going to be talking about uh, staining wood with India ink and alcohol. Um, I like to use India ink alcohol on almost everything I do. And we'll be using this uh, isopropyl alcohol you can buy at uh, box stores or pharmacy. There's two different, uh, two different types. There's a 70% and a 90%. Uh, I like to use the 90% because the difference between the two is that uh, the difference between 70 and 90 is all water. So when you're using woods, the less water, the better. I'm going to take permanent waterproof Higgins India ink. I'm going to take, take two tablespoons and add it to this pint of alcohol, and that's going to give me my base mix. And then what I like to do is take three small bottles and put it on my table. And what I'll do is I'll fill one completely full with the ink and alcohol mixture. I will pour half of that into the next bottle. And I will then fill it up with, Indi with the uh, alcohol. And then I will pour half of that into the last one. And what that ends up giving me is three different strengths. A light one, a medium one, and a dark one. And when I'm working, I like to work from my light one to my dark one. It is much easier to go from lighter to darker than it is darker to lighter. Um, staining the wood, if you're going to use plain old raw wood, it's a very simple process to do. I basically, after I've put my bracing on my wall, I'm going to just make sure when I do it, I just go from top to bottom with alcohol covering it all. I then will go back and do random boards and that'll give it not an even look. And don't forget when you're doing wood that's along the ground that the bottom will be darker. So add a little more alcohol to the bottom. You can see in this particular sample that the nail holes have jumped out because they've absorbed the alcohol and it kind of gives you a, a, a stronger look. On this one, we, which you've seen in, the, in one of the other ones, is that we've darkened the color and actually our nail holes jump out and it kind of blends our sign also right into the wall. Well, unlike Jack, I'm not quite the proponent of alcohol and India ink that he is, or that a lot of modelers are. Uh, alcohol and India ink reminds me always of the old joke, you can't unscrew a pregnant woman, because frankly, if you use too much alcohol and India ink, you can darken your surfaces to the point that you really can't bring them back to life visually, and that's something you don't want to get caught up in. Uh, recently, we've picked up some new product by Hunterline, a Canadian place uh, owned by a fellow named Rick up in Canada who's come out with a series of pre-mixed solutions uh, that I understand basically use shoe dye in place of uh, India ink to get essentially the same results. Now here we have sandalwood brown, here we have something called creosote black, here we have something called light gray and the last time I saw these folks at a train show they must have had maybe 15 or 20 different mixtures of different colors. Now these are very thin, they go on very light. I prefer to build up colors as opposed to putting them on any heavier than I have to. It's, it's always easier to make something darker than to go the other way with it. And this is just an option to the alcohol India ink and I think it's a good one. This is affordable, it'll last forever, and it's certainly repeatable. So that's my take on how you can add some extra character without particularly worrying about maybe overdoing it, which is always a concern uh, as far as I'm concerned.